Hello students, in this video we will see how to check for a prime number in an efficient manner. The operating word over here is efficient. We will first write the program in the regular manner that is we will count the number of factors and we will check whether the number of factors are true or not and then we will improve it drastically so that you get an efficient program. So let's begin. So we will begin with the traditional approach that is we will write a function, we will call it public static boolean we'll give it a descriptive name is prime to check whether any given number n is a prime or not and first we'll try to check for a prime number by counting the number of divisors or factor so a prime number by definition is a number which is divisible by only two other numbers one and the number itself so that is what we'll try to do we'll count the number of factors so we'll say int count is equal to 0, then we'll run a loop, int divisor is equal to 1, divisor is less than or equal to n, and then we'll say divisor plus plus. So, and then if the number is divisible by the divisor, that means it leaves a remainder of 0, then what we'll do, we'll just say count plus plus, that is we'll increase the count, so we are counting the number of the factors and in the end we'll simply say return count equal equal 2. So if the count is equal to 2, it's a prime number, otherwise it's not a prime number. So let's first check this algorithm. So I'll simply say System dot out dot println and we'll call the is prime number and let's say we are trying to check for the number 30. So now if I run the program the answer is false. So 30 is not a prime number which is correct. Let's create one more test case and this time we'll make it 31. So if I run the program again, I should get false for the first case and we should get true for the second case. Let's run it to be sure. So if I run it again, we are getting false for the first case and true for the second case. So this is the tra traditional approach and it is giving the correct answer. Now we'll try to optimize this code. Now, the first thing which we must notice is that 2 is the only even prime number, number less than 2 are not prime and numbers more than 2 may or may not, may not be prime obviously but we can exclude all the even numbers because 2 is the only even prime number. So let's do it. So what we'll do is that in the beginning itself we'll check if n is less than 2 return false. Like I told you numbers less than 2 are not prime. So, no need to write this also. Then we say that if n equal to equal to 2, please note 2 is the only even prime number, so we are checking it separately. So, if n is equal to 2, we will straight away say return true and then we will say if n modulus 2 equals 0, that is we are checking whether the number is even or not. Please note, we are coming here only if the number is not 2 and if it is not 2 and it is even, it cannot be prime. So, we will say it straight away say return false. So, this will drastically reduce the number of times the loop is running when we are actually counting the factors. So, if we run the code now or just hold on and then in the else block we'll move the rest of the code. So rest of the code goes over here. Now the program is slightly efficient but wait we are still not there. Now up till now we were taking the loop till n. Now let me show you something interesting. Let's say the number is 100. 
Now, if you see the factors, 100 is divisible by 1, it is divisible by 2, it is divisible by 4, it is divisible by 5, it is divisible by 10, it is divisible by 20, 25 and 50. So, these are the divisors of 100. But please notice, the divisors don't exist in isolation. You multiply some number by some other number to get the product. So, 1 into 100 is 100, 2 into 50 is 100, 4 into 25 is 100, 5 into 20 is 100, 10 into 10 is 100, 20 into 5 is 100, 25 into 2 is 100, sorry, 25 into 4 is 100 and 50 into 2 is 100 and also 100 into 1 is 100. So, notice if you have divided by 1 and 1 into 100 is 100, why to divide by 100 again? Similarly, if you have divided by 2 and 2 into 50 is 100, why you should divide by 50? So, the point to be noted over here is that beyond this point that is 10 into 10, the repetition is starting. So, if you want to eliminate the repetition, what we can do is, we can take the loop till square root of n. So, now, the limit should not be n, but it should be equal to the square root. But we shouldn't find the square root over here, because if we find the square root over here in the condition part of the for loop, what will happen is that it will calculate the square root every time, and calculating square root is not a inexpensive operation. So, what we'll do is, we'll go over here and we'll say that, okay, int limit is equal to int math dot sqrt n. So, notice I am finding the square root using the library function sqrt and then I am typecasting it into an integer because math dot sqrt returns a double. Uh, am I missing a bracket over here? Yes, there is an extra bracket over here which we'll eliminate and then this loop should go till the limit. Now, one more thing to notice is that we have already checked for 2. So, we will not start from 2, we'll start from 3 and since we know that if you are in this else block, the numbers are odd, there is no need to divide by 4 after 3 or for that matter by 6 after 5. So, instead of saying divisor plus plus, we will say divisor plus is equal to 2. So, now notice one more thing. We are not starting from 1, we are not going till the number. So, if any divisor is there, that has to be the third divisor, which means that if you are getting any divisor between 3 and the limit, the number is not a prime number. So, what we will do over here is, we will say that, okay, no need to calculate this. We will just say return false if you find a divisor. And since we are not calculating the count anymore, we can get rid of this variable. And over here, we will simply say return true. So, let us look at it once more. We will find the limit, that is the square root. Our loop will start from 3 and it will go till the limit. And we are increasing the divisor by 2 each time, so we don't waste time in dividing by an even number. And since we are starting from 3 and we are not going till the number, any divisor you get is at least the third divisor, which means that the number is not prime, will return false. And if the loop completes successfully, will return true. So, let's first run the program and see whether this is working or not. And if we run it again, the program is working, we are getting false, true. Now, just have a look at it once more. So, let's say I change this to, or rather the second one to 101. So, in the earlier code, when we were counting the number of factors, the loop was running 100 times. Then, after including this, when we eliminated all the even numbers, the loop was running only 50 times. But now what is happening is that, let's count how many times the loop is running. The limit is square root of n, so square root of 101 is 10 point something and when you convert it into integer, it becomes 10. So, the loop starts from 3, that is, first we'll check by 3, 
then we add plus to it, two to it, plus two to it, and then we'll divide by five, then we divide by seven, then we divide by nine, and after four divisions, the nine, the divisor will become 11 and the loop will finish. So now we are taking only four divisions to check whether or not 101 is a prime number. And obviously for bigger numbers, you'll get better improvement. So this program, though this looks big and it requires some work on our part, is very efficient compared to our earlier program. I hope you like this optimized version of checking for a prime number program. And in case there are any doubts or clarification, please feel free to contact me using the comment box. Thank you.